So, the Super's on jack stands again. What's going on everybody? Long time no see on this channel. Kevin here, back again with another video. I had a really simple job to do on this car. Just tightening an oil feed on the turbo. And that led to more complicated things that I wanted to change and fix up. But today we're not here to talk about this car. I was just giving you the update before we get to today's real topic of the video. Which is the new daily. As many of you guys know, I sold my LS400 a couple months back. So, with that being said, I bought a new car. I just had not revealed it for quite a while. Some of you guys may have peeped it in the back of the previous videos when I was finishing up the Mercedes brakes on the Supra, which for those of you guys who never saw that, yep, we got Brembo's in here. Well, a little dark. Yeah, we got some Brembo's in here. And then, of course, we installed our race star wheels properly now. Because the first time we had just mocked them up. But in those videos, you might have peeped this car in the background. And today, I'm finally going to reveal it. It's my new daily driver. And while it may not be what I pictured myself buying, I really like it. And, well, it has a lot of benefits to it as well that I will get into shortly. So with all that being said, guys, here's my new daily driver a 1998 Honda Prelude. We got the Honda blades on it. Authentic Honda blades that came with the car. Headlights are, well, a little fogged up, hazy. We'll polish up the headlights real soon, get this thing looking real nice. And well, the bumper needs a little bit of work. As you guys may see, it's not 100% perfect. It used to have a front splitter. I'll post a picture right now of what the car looked like with that. But honestly, I kind of like it more without it. The front splitter ended up breaking on the highway, but it kind of turned out for the better, so I'm not even that mad about it. Um, I like the way the car looks now. It looks a little bit cleaner up front. And well, it also came with a diffuser in the rear. A really nice, gritty exhaust system. And it also came with a short ram intake. I'll show you guys under the hood right now. The car is actually pretty well kept. It was very well maintained by the previous owner. Uh, it was manual swapped as well as you'll see when I open up the interior. Let me get my keys out. The car was manual swapped as you see right there. And the interior is pretty decent. You take a look at the door panels, they're intact, which is actually very rare to find in some of these older Hondas. And the passenger side, very clean as well. The dash has no cracks on it. Speedo works, tack works, everything works on this car. So I cannot complain at all. The seats are very clean as well. So interior wise, I gotta give this thing like an, a solid eight or nine out of 10 really. Now I did wash the car and everything, and yes, it does look a little dirty, as you can tell. A lot of water stains and everything. The car needs a serious detail. Uh, I did wash it, but it's clearly not enough. But it does look worse than it did before, simply because, well, we've had a lot of rain here in Florida recently. There's also a lot of construction where I live, so that's part of the issue. Uh, so the car will always be dirtier than it really should be. So as you guys know, the Prelude comes with an H22. This is an H22A4. I forgot the code of the transmission that was swapped into it, to be honest, so I don't really know what that's called, but it is a five-speed manual, and the H22 is completely stock. Timing was done recently, according to the previous owner, supposedly about last year or so. Um, and then the only modification engine-wise is just a short ram intake, as you see. Nothing too crazy going on. Stock header as well, but it does have the catback exhaust but it's been extremely reliable the only things i've had to do to it are just replace the lower hose for prevention and i had two cooling hoses break that's about it other than that it's been great and well oh the cps did get wet one day that it was pouring and it was like driving through a lake so that happened and it got stuck in limp mode but eventually it dried up and the car was totally fine now to get into the goodies in the trunk this is the fun part Part of the reason I bought this car actually. Came with some fat kicker subwoofers, some nice competition 12 inch subs, and uh, it's paired with an Alpine amplifier that I bought for it. The car did not come with an amplifier. Um, and they sound amazing. It's not 
can't feel your face bass, but it's definitely enough bass that it shakes the car and it's definitely loud for sure. So it's very nice. It's not my favorite sound in the world, but it definitely sounds decent. And as you guys see, 145,000 miles. Uh, I had bought it at about 144,600. I've driven it around a little bit here and there, uh, but it's been a really good car so far. We have our subwoofers. Baby, go come in my Big knock your butt. The beat went off? I go, it's like a fucking guy's piece in the telly. So do you want fucking guys? speaker does not work I actually have it there uh, it's not because the speaker is broken at all because it's not it's a wiring problem the stock speaker wires don't really work for whatever reason apparently it's pretty common with these cars so these wires were set up to be run through the door but you can't really run it through the factory grommet well the only options at this point would be undo the harness of the door to get that speaker working and uh, one option a friend gave me would be to cut everything eliminate the what you call it the connector because there are wires that are peeled back that go into a chassis in here so uh that would eliminate th those wires and i would have some fresh wire there uh when i crimp them together that would be one option the other option is some guys just replace the wires that come from the connector uh that's the other option and the other is the ratchet way which would be literally putting it through the door which is not ideal but it's possible even if you really shouldn't do it but I would need a grommet for that. But the most probable option would be eliminating the connector as a friend suggested, simply because it's not just those wires that don't work, the wiring in general is a bit of a mess inside the door, so that should help fix it. I'm actually gonna play the music again so you hear the subs. So first drive in the Honda for you guys. Let's get it going. Takes off nice and smooth. Oh, I also forgot to mention, axles feel like they're a little bit uh, worn, like they're kind of gonna go out. So I'll do a couple pulls for you guys, but I'm not gonna dog it too much. Uh, but other than that, the car's been fine. Now one very cool thing about this car that goes underappreciated in cars that do have these features, but I've finally been able to feel the joy of driving something relatively sporty, well not that sporty, but you know like project car life, while still having all the creature comforts of AC, power steering, and a radio, so that's been really cool. Uh, oh, and the cracked windshield, that, I gotta get it fixed real soon. I got a guy I can call for it. Just haven't done it yet, but uh, it'll be done soon. But every time I drive this thing, I just think to myself, what the Supra can be if I get all those creature comforts working. Because this car feels amazing, and it's not really that crazy a car or anything. It feels great just because it has all that stuff. Just having that sensation of having all those creature comforts has actually motivated me to get all that stuff working on the Supra as soon as possible because that Supra will feel absolutely amazing if it has all the luxuries that this thing does. Well, not luxuries, but commodities to be correct because this car is definitely not a luxury car. I will say the exhaust sounds better in the car than outside the car. It is a bit raspy sort of generic honda boy so it's not the best sound that you can imagine but it's not that bad either as far as plans for this car to be honest as much as i do like this car and i'm really happy i got it because since i was a kid this was the honda that i always told myself if i end up buying a honda for whatever reason i would love to own a prelude so i'm glad i found a prelude so i'm glad i found a prelude for that reason but as far as uh, 
if I would like to do more to this car than it's already done, unless it breaks, no. I wouldn't simply because I need at least one normal car. Damn, it didn't take that bump too nicely. <laughs> but I need at least one normal or at least semi-normal car. I can't have two projects at the same time as far as like go fast cars. It's just not ideal, especially at this point in my life. So I'm not really looking to do more to this car. Just keep it running, keep it driving, keep it nice and uh, go from there. So really it's just gonna be a daily pretty much unless something happens to it, like I said. Uh, that's his only purpose and it serves it very well. In comparison to the Lexus, you fill up way less gas than you ever would in the LS400. So it's definitely saving me some money there. A lot of money there, actually. A whole lot. You could be on empty and fill this tank with $30 of 93 which this car runs on premium. That's the only thing that's not really that economical about it. Uh, but it does come with 200 horses from the factory, so you will also get a little more fun than other Hondas that you would purchase because it is a little faster. So there's that to it. And it's not horrible on the gas either. It's not horrible at all, especially if you keep it cruising like this, fifth gear, chilling. Nothing wrong with having this car. You could get something more economical, but it probably won't be as fun. Uh, and that's the other thing, the manual transmission. Not only does it make the drive a lot more fun for me, but it's actually making me a lot better. I've actually felt a lot of improvement in my driving with this car, which was one of the main reasons why I started looking for a manual daily. Let me do a little two to three for you guys here. <laughs> it's nothing crazy. It's not too fast at all, but it's fun. It's fun for what it is. I can't really be mad at it. I can't. So that's one of the reasons I bought it. And I have felt some improvement in my driving skill because of this car, because the Supra, you learn to drive it after a while, you get used to it, but then I put it down. And if I start trying to upgrade stuff or something broke a little more than expected, or like this time that I'm just fixing a problem that wasn't really causing the car to not run, but I just want to get it over with so that the car is better and so that I don't have to think about it anymore, which we'll get into that problem in a different video. You guys, Some of you guys already know, but I'll explain a little more as to why and how the whole thing has happened in the next video. But say with any issue like that, or if I wanna make it any faster, or if it does break down badly, and I do need some time off to fix it, then I almost forget how to drive the car fast. I'll obviously have the basic down of how to drive stick, but I won't be just banging gears by any means when I hop in the car again. So I got this thing not only because it's cheaper than the Lexus, manual, so it's more fun, but also manual and that it makes me a better driver in the other car most likely. But this car eliminates that gap that every single time I try to fix something on the Supra, I pretty much lose out on how to drive stick almost. So that's a great benefit of this car. And the fuel economy, like I mentioned, the fuel economy is absolutely amazing compared to what the Lexus was. Now I am aware, most of us as car enthusiasts look for smiles per gallon, not miles per gallon when we buy these cars. But when you're looking for a daily, those miles per gallon are amazing and you need them, you need them. Especially if you have another project car, just like I have the Supra, something that really sucks a lot of money from you in both parts and in the fuel to keep it running. A daily like this would really, really help. So uh, as much as I never thought I was gonna be a Honda guy, I like this thing. I like this thing a lot. It serves its purpose, it's fun. I mean, you get on it and it's not 
terribly slow. You get on it, and it's not terribly slow either. Well, I'll take that back. It's pretty damn slow. <laughs> but but uh, you get the point. For an A to B, you don't really need a lot of power anyway. This is more than enough power for a little bit of fun here and there. And if you need to merge onto the highway, you do it efficiently. Oh, man. I think those people just crashed right now. <laughs> but anyway, like I was saying... which is a bonus is that really a golf trying me or something I'm not trying to race dude <laughs> I don't know what what Volkswagen that is behind me necessarily but he came flying behind me after that <laughs> but uh, like I was saying it's a great bonus that is fun and well it's a very comfortable car to be honest the cockpit is not it, it doesn't feel small how i expected it to uh because i am used to more of the gt feel with the supra and then of course the ls400 was an absolute land yacht of a luxury car so uh coming from those cars i didn't expect me to be too comfortable or or take too much of a liking to this car but i actually kind of have and uh it's not and it's actually been better than i expected so i'm happy with this thing i'm happy with this thing i'm planning on keeping it for a while i'll tell you that oh, it's a freaking jetta <laughs> so thank you guys so much for watching this video the introduction to my new daily driver my honda as much as i never thought i was gonna buy a honda i've actually enjoyed this thing so uh <laughs> thank you guys for watching you guys will see more of this car and most certainly a lot more of the supra and other projects on the channel uh this thing will make the random appearance here and there because i'm not doing a whole lot to it and i don't do a whole lot with it other than point a to point b um oh is that damn that's a hellcat that shit nice but yeah i don't do a whole lot with this thing other than uh just point a to point b so uh you're not gonna be seeing a lot with this thing but you'll see it here and there so be sure to like comment and subscribe if you have enjoyed this video and stay tuned for a lot more to come on the other cars on the channel so i'll catch you guys in the next video have a great day